Hello, welcome back to Tara by Andy. Thank you for being here. This is my vibrational reading. Please do your own research for entertainment purposes and allegedly. Hi, you guys. I hope you had a good Memorial Day. And thank you to the people that served. And I appreciate that. Hope you had a nice meal with your family and a nice laid back day or doing whatever pleases you. So carrying on here, I'm calling this divide and rule. Yeah, um, it was we know that's part of what a narcissist does is divide, divide, then try and attempt to rule. Uh, that's kind of what we're seeing now, this final playbook uh, play on Ma uh, Megan's part. But unfortunately, they have been able to rule. So that's why they're kind of um, scavenging at this point in time and uh, failing in their prospects. Uh, she's she's hell bent on trying to divide and rule, and that's why they want their own quote royal house. Uh, so yeah, Harry really has um, resigned his spine to Megan as long as well as his um, testicles. Um, he does need to unresign himself, you know. But he handed it all over on a platter for her. Um, he clearly has not learned the basics of meditative practices. Uh, which is to, you know, not allow that kind of situation to unfold. Uh, you know, he does that whole crossing his hands pose and tapping, and he's such a meditative person. He's so healed far from it. Otherwise, he wouldn't be handing his spine over on a platter. Um, so anyways, um, yeah, you just don't resign yourself to other people. You trust in yourself. You learn to trust your judgment. Uh, that just is not there. Um, so anyways, um, you know, Basically, also, uh, when it comes to meditative practices, even informal daily activity also is part of meditation. People don't realize it, but it's true. It's you're basically how you carve out your time and what you do with your time and how you handle yourself in terms of your reactivity is also a, a form of uh, how you learn and grow through meditative practices. He has not garnered that whatsoever. We wouldn't be seeing from either one of them if they truly were yogis. Uh, they're wasting all their time. Megan's wasted all that mat time. Harry has wasted all his tapping and meditative, putting on this guru front. Uh, we're the voice, we're speakers. Uh, they can't even lead themselves. Uh, like I say, it's it's Tweedledee and Tweedledum. It's the dumb leading the dumb kind of. So anyways, you know, it's like what kind of enlightenment are they? Uh, they are the bottom of the barrel, really. And basically, it's, you know, that is the repertoire for humanity in terms of being able to get to that place in a meditative stance, in a meditative practice, is being able to be at one with others and you don't try to divide and rule. Uh, it's the opposite of that. You try to fit in. You try to be part of the collective. You try to... Uh, help others. You don't elevate yourself by any means necessary. So really, they are pretty dark, and everyone can see right through it. And you know, I just don't see the skill set. It's just not there. But they're trying to tell everyone they have it without actually showing it. And that is back back to a, a narcissist brain structure. You know, uh, they always talk about how kind they are. I'm so kind. I'm so kind. They talk about it. But they talk the talk and they don't do the walk, right? That's just classic, classic. So just have to bring that back up into the forefront here. Talk about this because this is what's being semi-discussed. You know, some of these issues are what's triggering my thought process today is what I see online. And, you know, basically, where's the holding back on their reactivity? They don't do that. That's another thing that meditative practices teaches you holding back on your emotional reactivity so that you don't screw up your own life. Emotional reactivity, highly emotional reactivity in that hot flash moment, which they constantly do with their tweets and their posts and their their sugars and all that. Uh, her reactivity with, um, you know, with Getty, with, with Radar Online, all the posts she does is her reactivity. That is her reactivity. She doesn't have the ability to hold back, back to divide and conquer. Uh, so anyways, there's that. And, you know, she gets off on the duper's delight. And she's very consistent with it. You can compare it to Amber Heard's side-by-side -side photos. You will notice it. You will see it. They are cut from the same cloth. You know, um, basically, uh, most people have her number. And she actually looks evil when she's doing it. And she does look like a cartoon character that looks like she's bad news. And the contempt... 
um, is asymmetrical in the look of the face is what I was mentioning on Twitter. It has a very asymmetrical smile. It's kind of like that emoji you will see on your phone. That's that sideways smile. That's it right there. Along with the super, uh, a super deep frown, that also the side smile and the deep frown is that contempt and that is that fake false frown. It's a frown, deep, deep frowny face, which is sort of in a mocking way. If you were to Google Duper's Delight or uh, Contempt, that's what you will find if you actually just do a simple Google. So there you have that. And then what else do I want to say? Um, yeah, I said on Twitter today or yes, late last night that she's worthy of the DSM-5 psych manual. She definitely is for public consumption, the education. She's a case study for everyone. And um, so, you know, there you have that. And, you know, she always has that haughty glint in her eye. It's very evil. You can feel it. I talked about that yesterday with the little toddler. Uh, it had such a air of... Um, vindictive, malevolent, evil energy when she was looking at that toddler with their chin tucked down and that head, the eyes dropped down, but then the eyeballs looked up like it had just something out of a dark character you would see in a, in a movie, uh, really. And it does look like it's a character is what it looks like. And wow, 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 it'll put a chill down your spine. And there's so many clips of her where it would put a chill down your spine. And I could see that's why Queen Elizabeth said she was evil. I'm sure she spotted quite a few of those looks. When someone does the duper's delight, deep frown, sideways smile, they try to be very stealthy when they're doing it to who they're directing it at. Many people in the room will not notice it except that one person. So then it's very hard for people to believe it unless it's directed at them. They're very, they can be very stealthy. It's very narc psychopathic type of energy. So I just want to say that. What else? Um, so anyways, yeah, um, People Magazine also, just to, to go on, uh, Catherine was spotted, and it was in People Magazine, she was spotted publicly. Uh, comments were that she's going to join events if able, and that she will, re uh, she will return uh, stronger than ever. And that, um, so anyways, she, you know, this is back to Megan and Harry, uh, taking advantage of a vulnerable situation to their benefit uh, so that they can conquer. While someone else is, is in a down low position, they try to conquer. They're, they're saying, though, that she will come back more passionate, which I don't doubt. And she's just very sick. But they've got, you know, that's probably not going to sit too well with Megan at all because she wants her dead. Let's, I guarantee it. She wants her dead. So I want to read also one last thing. What was I going to talk about? Oh. I was going to talk about the power and control wheel. Power and control wheel. Not not the karmic wheel of the deck, but power and control wheel. It's co one of, there's several aspects to it. One of them is um, it is basically intimidation. It is emotional abuse, isolation, minimizing, denying, and it is blame shifting. It's using children as a weapon, and now she's going to try and use that. She's tried. They tried using the children as a weapon against the family, against the public, against the entire UK. What children? But they're going to try and play that game anyways, right? So usually it's, it goes with male privilege also. Because let's face it, most of the toxic energy I talk about is primarily uh, higher numbers of males versus females. So when they apply this power and control wheel dynamic in psychology, they do tend to speak much of male privilege. So, and also there's the economic abuse that comes with it and the coercive and controlled threats. So Megan's really trying to get that power and control and that divide and conquer energy going. That's always been her aim. So the fact that Catherine is, uh, you know, popping into the public and she's being seen, I'm sure she's feeling at this point that, ah, I can't control her. I want to control her. Uh, so that co coercion threats just isn't going to work. So I'm kind of interested, um, you know, using children as a weapon. That's their next game plan. They're really trying to do that, aren't they? Which is emotional abuse. Because not only that, if they have them, what do they do? They isolated them. All right. They isolate. So they, they use that Invisi kids as part of that. It's part of a threat. It's part of, well, I can intimidate you by not showing them. Uh, it is, a, you know, emotional abuse of the family. Well, we, you know, they, they're not going to see you. You guys are, are toxic. You're horrible. Uh, you know, basically it is economic abuse. Well, if you want to see them, then you're going to pay our bills. 
uh, that kind of stuff. I'm, I have no doubt uh, that they use that weapon on them as well. You want to see them, then give us back Frogmore. You want to see them, then make us back to being uh, working royals. You want to see them, then give uh, give us a pay raise. If you want to see them, then elevate us more. It's sort of, it may not even involve necessarily dollars, but status when it applies to them. So I can see that happening here. And wanting that privilege and using every means to to, to garner that, that upper hand Instead of male privilege, it'd be male, uh, yin and yang, male and female privilege of Meghan and Harry. And uh, everything is a weapon for them. The empathy is a weapon. Uh, empathy is definitely a weapon against uh, neurotypicals. But once they, once they catch on to the game, it doesn't work. The game's over. And too many people do have their, their gig. They know what their game is. So she's not happy, I'm sure. So let's get into this using children as a weapon using children as a weapon. So this is their next game. They're, they really are truly falling apart, you guys, because they have, to, they have to produce. And that's something that they, with this power control wheel, they don't produce. They don't want resolve. They don't want uh, a debate. They just want to control. They don't want anything to be debated. They just want to control the narrative. Uh, so they've got to keep it divided and conquered in their mindset. They're not going to get resolved. They'll never do resolve. That's why we hear the word salad. You know, that's why we hear the false promises. And that's why they keep the isolation going. So let's get some children. Let's get some children. Let's get some children. Using children as a weapon. And then a lot of ugly divorces, uh, there's the keeping the children away from each other. So you know, she, Harry just needs to come out. He needs to just get his spine back, grab it from her, and come out clean. Everyone would buy his book, is everyone saying. If he actually wrote a book about Megan, maybe that's my spread. Will he write a book about Megan? Hmm, maybe I should switch this video. Maybe so. Will Harry, I think I will. Will Harry write a book about Megan when it's all said and done? Will he even survive? That's the problem. Will he even survive? The fact he can't get his brother back and he never will, I find it highly unlikely. But let's just do what if. Does Harry fantasize? I guess the probably the better question is, is Harry fantasizing about unloading and doing a spare, a spare to spare me? A spare me book about spare me from my torturous marriage. Spare me, Megan. Spare me. Uh, I don't think so. Kind of energy. <laughs> Will he write about Megan? Does he fantasize about writing about Megan? Because he just may not make it to the other side, okay? To the other side of the problem. I don't think he can. He's got that abandonment wound, you guys. I, I just don't think he's strong enough for it. He really does need his spine back. So does Harry want to write a book? Does Harry want to write a book? Does Harry want to write a book about Megan? Is he, is he, is he fantasizing? Does he fantasize about writing a book? about his wife, his beard wife. <laughs> Does Harry fantasize? Yeah, he's feeling a lot of shame. He knows he's out in the cold and he's in estrangement and he can't get back and he definitely is feeling deep shame. Deep mental, physical, emotional poverty in essence with the Five of Pentacles. He knows he doesn't have a support network, so this is a real problem for him. This is why he can't understand why he can't get back and he's total... His spirit's broken, a very blown out ego with the Five of Pentacles. Very homeless vibe, very terrified, filled with self-pity, self-hatred, very orphan energy. That is that divide and conquer I was talking about. I'm going to take where it's sticking out. You can see where it's sticking out right here. I'm going to take from that, and that will be where I start my stack. I'm going to do that today. I don't always do it, but today I'm going to do it. Challenging position, he's defeated. He's defeated, and this would be, okay, maybe I could put some plans into action. I feel like death. Should I should I cough in myself? Because in the Joseph Magi system, which is the, the original psych, gypsy method, actually, uh, the four of swords uh, in the original gypsy method is the coffin card. So basically, it's the death card also. So a dramatic change. It would create a dramatic change because the past is gone. Um, and he would have to embrace, let go, let go of her and embrace something new. He would have to kill off the relationship in order to do it. And he would have to plan it because four of swords is about going into plan mode, 
putting your emotions off to the side, not being emotionally reactive in the moment from your shame, holding back with the Four of Swords and trying to heal the situation with solitude. He knows he needs to go in the hospital. He knows he needs treatment. He needs to regenerate himself and plan the next moves because Four of Swords is I'm going to aim for healing and grounding and I'm going to plan this next move. So yes, he does think about it when he's in a very defeated, I can't get out of this. How can I change the situation? Death card, major transformation. So yes, he does because he knows his past is gone. He's now out. He's completely out. So this is the only way he can feel some sort of retribution probably for himself, sadly. And we got this. I will just lay these out. And at the bottom of the deck. Yep, it lost resource, lost money. Yeah, and he doesn't know. He, I think he's he's challenged because he doesn't know if he'd actually be able to make money. That the, the fact that it's also a lost attachment. You know, he'd have to let go of her. He'd have to get rid of her and a lost possession, lost resources. I think he's also concerned he's just not going to get the money on top of not having her. And also it would be dropping the pattern behavior of his shame and his broke energy, spiritually, physically, emotionally broke energy. He'd have to stop playing victim. He'd have to get a spine back in essence. Focal point. You'd have to tell the truth and apologize. Seven of Swords in reverse. Yeah, because he's been busted. He's been a lying thief and you'd have to admit his part. You'd have to admit that he played a role in this, that his actions hurt other people. He barely put in effort. He liked to claim wins. Wins. You'd have to remove the social mask between the two of them and rip off Megan's uh, Duper's Delight. I was just talking about the Duper's Delight, that sideways smile, that, uh, that, um, you know, that emoji on your phone, you'd have, he's that emoji that, that duper d delight shit grin of the covert narcissist would have to apologize and drop the grin that the, the grin is no longer there. So it's not a great pleasure. And with the seven in reverse, not being able to feel challenged anymore. Nothing's a challenge. I can't, I can't go up against you. There is no, the challenge is lost in this position with that seven in reverse. There is no challenge. The challenge is gone. That's full exposure there. They can't claim a win. You've lost. You've been exposed. You're busted. The truth is out. Drop all pretenses, you little jealous, <clears throat> spineless man. No more duper's delight for you. Little covert narcissist card here. Past position that doesn't serve. He knows he cannot get daddy to change things for him, and he's also not in a position of power. He cannot restore order. He cannot stand in his power mode. He thought he can get worldly success. And get his father's respect, his brother's respect, get the become the new royal house. Be the king King Harry. King has balls, has no balls. He's not gonna be king has no balls. And that's not gonna happen. He thought he can start his own little royal house. He knows that he's very feeling very shameful about also trying to take down his family. This would be taking down the royal family, taking down his father. Not his father no longer uh, being able to fix his things, no longer correcting things for him, saying no to him. They're in the past. He, can he cannot get that control over his father by playing victim, by playing his narc games. It's just not going to work. Drop the, bat the pattern of behavior, the four of pentacles in reverse. Here, the avoidance card. Everything's been avoided. He's been avoiding it with the four of cups upright. He should have accepted the love. He should have accepted whatever was offered to him by his father, by the royal family. And he didn't. He had to go into duper's delight lying. He had. To, he was too shamed by who he was as a person. And he's still feeling shame. He's still in this avoidant, uh, dysregulated attachment. Uh, he, lo he gets lost in his own thoughts. He has a very rejecting mindset of other people. Therefore, he rejects other people. Therefore, he misses out on opportunities. He knows he, he can, they will not invest in him anymore. That it's just going to stay an avoidance situation. And he's very bored. He knows his family is unaffected by him now because they're basically, they got him figured out. Just like I was saying, everyone's got their game. Everyone has, knows what they are at this point in time. So now there's a lot of avoidant energy 
uh, with him. A lot of people are going to avoid him. The royal family is going to avoid him. Nobody was interested in him anymore. There's that. It's the card of indifference. Card of indifference. And now he he has to go go to work. Guy doesn't like to work, does he? He'd have to go to work on himself, his own energy, and not give up. He would have to create action, move, and change for his own self benefit, without knowing that he can't truly get back what he lost. What he everything, all this screams, I lost everything. Now I have to go to work. He didn't want to go to work. He feels very defeated. He's very shameful that he did this because he didn't like working. He's a lazy ass. Narcissists are complete, total, utter lazy. They're very lazy. It's just something that kind of goes hand in hand. That's why Megan always likes to put all the responsibility of all her jobs onto other people. Barely put in effort. Barely put in effort but claim the win. He can't do that. He would actually have to actually work on it. And then he also knows he can't get back what he lost. Ten of Cups in reverse. It's coming. It's a negative conclusion. It's very negative karma. He cannot harvest getting them back. It's done. It's over with. Complete fail. It'd have to be honest that he, that he worked at, at basically creating a family, shattered family. And he never gave up on shattering his family. Then he actually shattered himself. And now they're all avoiding him. So it would be like a final blow. Uh, on the perfect image family that he had that. It's basically letting the genie out of the bottle. They don't have it. He never got his happy ever after. He got quite the opposite. There is no reunions. He cannot get back. That's also babies, family, don't have it. So he would have to be uh, unmasking himself. He would have to do it and he would have to be very loyal, practical, and speak the truth with the message, with the page of um, Pentacles. He would also have to be a good writer. He's not a good writer. He would have to be have that academia hat put on and plan for his future and not give up for his future. He would have to he'd have to literally do it. And it's a good news position because it would be telling the truth. And he'd have to be dedicated to it. He it, it would be it's like a big dream. He actually dreams of doing it. He does dream of doing it. This is yeah, I would like to do it and and I keep thinking about it. He does think about it. He does want it. He would be dedicated to it. He would have to be completely dedicated to it if he if he committed to it. If he said, okay, this is what I'm going to do next, he would have to really put in effort. And it would have to come from him and not Megan. Megan wrote a, a big portion of Spare, probably all of it. I don't even think he even wrote the book. Someone else did it. He's fairly illiterate. So he would have to study. He'd have to put on a study hat and actually learn how to write. He doesn't know how to write. It would cause a lot of conflict. It would cause a lot of drama with the five of wands. And it would cause a lot of challenge fuel, a lot of confrontation, competition, arguments. It would be bitterness. A lot of, a lot of people would be debating his words and what he's saying. So he doesn't probably like that. He, we know he has an adversity issue. He is um, adversity avoidant. He doesn't like it. Because he feels emotionally broke as it is. He's always emotionally broke. So he tries to avoid conflict because he has that low adversity. He can't handle it. He doesn't have a strong sense of self. He doesn't have a spine. He doesn't have balls. So that's why he likes to avoid conflict. So that would create a drama for him. And that would not be uh, shutting it down. That would just stir up more. It would definitely stir up more to where it caused more division of his of the royal family. Because once again, it's more drama coming from, from the Sussex camp. Final outcome, yeah, this is the problem here. Will he even survive? Will he even survive to even do it? <clears throat> Knight of Swords in reverse, the aggressor who fails because and willing to kill. Willing to kill, going full stop, self-harming violence because they can't create change. It's total battle fatigue. And this is where he's not likely to do it. And that's what I was just saying. If he can survive it. The fact he doesn't have his family, that, he, that, that right there is going to end him because he could not create the illusion and he would have to work at it, keep at it, do the work. He'd have to drop the pattern behavior. Everybody knows who he is and what he's, everyone's avoiding him now. He's trying to get work done. He wants to improve his life, but every improvement he tries to make is nothing but more debate and chaos. Not, he's not changing anything. It's an unachievable aim in Harry's mind. So he's, he has no spine. He doesn't have the mental strength to do it. He's too, he's too much of, I've got two right here. Self-harm, 
self-harm with the coffin card, and it's all over his shame. He's too shame-ridden here. He's way too shame-ridden to, I think, in my, in my feelings, is to even survive this, to be honest. Uh, let's get to the center here. He feels like it would just be, he's dreaming. He's dreaming. It's like a fantasy here of the Seven of Cups. He's dreaming, dreaming. It would be so great if I could do that. Should I choose that cup? Would it be, is it possible? You know, it could be self-destruction here at the Seven of Cups. It's just very wishful thinking. And it's a lot, and it would be over his lack of morality. It would be like a delusional ambition for him to do it. And basically it's gaslighting himself and everybody else. So I don't think he just doesn't have the mental strength to do it. This question has been asked of me. And he feels too vulnerable to do it. And it would be another negative message that would create more drama, chaos of the five of wands. He, it still can't get back his family. And he knows that he's kind of lied to people about his victimhood. Uh, he would have to talk about his victimhood. And I don't think he's capable of doing it because he's still caught up in his head about his options because he's got arrested development of the page of cups in reverse. He's like a young toddler who has never really educated himself or really cared to stay with learning. He doesn't like learning. Uh, that brings me back to his ADHD and his learning disabilities. He definitely has a learning disability. No doubt about it. His history sh proves it. The guy can't learn. He's never been a good student. He would actually have to put in the effort. And to him, he's not capable of building that up. He's total avoidant of educating himself. He, people are avoiding him now because he's just Mr. Mr. Vulnerable Guy, Mr. Guy who's Mr. Victim. And all that's gaslighting too. So he just likes to gaslight himself. He does gaslight himself. And with that page of cups in reverse, it just would be a negative announcement. Uh, and there could be more of a negative announcement about him because he has no emotional control over himself with that page of cups in reverse. Uh, he has lost all inspiration to keep lying. He's, he's lost all inspiration to keep lying and gaslighting people. That's why he's in this very defeated state of mind with a final ending of very defeated because everybody knows what he's been doing and everybody's avoiding him. Definitely going poverty, loss of money. He can't live in this kind of situation. It's intolerable to him, intolerable to him. And I got my dog scratching under the, the bed here. Must be a storm brewing. Because that would be Odin. Odin does not like storms, you guys. So anyways, that's that. Um, that's how I see it. All right, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, like and subscribe. Bye, you guys. Oh, and I'll probably put one out on that photographer next. Because I've been asked. So I'm going to do that today, too. I'm going to try and put that out. I'll do a shorter, short one on that one. Okay, bye, you guys.